Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about the basics of, of what we're doing. Um, I'm the owner of the company, I've been in the business for 40 years. I was one of the first guys involved in LED Electronics. I was the owner of LED Electronics for many years. And I've been the owner of a number of different companies uh, working on um, room correction technology back in the 90s. I was the owner of Snell Acoustics. And we did the world's first uh, room correction system back in 1993. So it's uh, what is it, 21 years ago. And digital amps too, no? And then we went into digital amps. Uh, one of my friends came up with the idea to make a fully digital amplifier back in 1996. And I paid for the, the development of the technology and all the patents and all of that. And we sold the patents in 1999 to Texas Instruments. By the way, the guys now are working with me again since the last couple of months, but that's secret. <laughs> um, so, uh, but that's going to be fun. So I've been in the really in the technology side of things um, for many, many years. I also have a retail business in Scandinavia where we have 90 shops. So that keeps us in touch with what customers want. So we know a little bit about the retail business and the manufacturing, the DSP, and the whole shebang. So I know an awful little about an awful lot, <laughs> but my, uh, my speciality has always been working with the acoustics and trying to make things work in practical terms at people's homes. Because you can make theoretically well-functioning products, but once people get them home, it's going to be a different matter. We have a very dramatic demo outside of the Lingdorf uh, Boom Perfect processor. Uh, taking care of an acoustical situation that is absolutely impossible. So that's the challenges we're facing, and that's what I like to work with and help customers getting better results. Today we're going to show P200 new processor from Simon Lindor. And we're going to show Atmos. Uh, of course there's the Atmos and there's the Auro. And uh, Atmos, in terms of the home side of things, don't have a lot of material yet. We actually only got demo material about two weeks ago. First time we could hear what we had been working on. Um, but this is what we got. It's a very limited selection. Next year we're going to have a huge selection. We're going to play both Auro our, our and Atmos. And uh, for that, our new processor is really specifically designed to handle that kind of thing. Because Auro and Atmos have slightly different setup methods, placement of speakers and so on. And we have two completely separate setup systems in the P200 processor that can handle both systems perfectly. And the customer doesn't have to think about it. When you have an Atmos movie, it will switch to that side of things. If you have an so Aura movie, it will automatically... The single voice of God and the single center high channel, are, are you handling we will that? We use them as appropriate with the voicing as appropriate for either Atmos or our role. As they you will them. use them. You're not going to switch them away. You're going to use them. Well, that depends. It depends a little bit on the client. And we honestly... And how about the two Atmos channels and the voice of God? Can you do the same oh, there? Yes, we can do exactly the same. Well, this is very noble. Yes. So uh, all of our products are fully digital. That is including the amplifier. The amplifier is a... D2A converter driving the speaker. We don't really have a power amp in our systems. We have all the power, but it's a D2A converter driving the speaker. From the processor, we send uh, all the sound and information control out to all the D2A converters slash amplifiers. I'll call them amplifiers from now on. Um, and from the processor, we control the power supplies of all the amplifiers to turn up and down the volume by changing the voltage available for the D2A conversion. So we don't change the signal, we don't change the sound, we don't change the music when we turn up and down the volume. We only change the power supply. So in that way we have additionally 27 dB of headroom, uh, headroom or dynamic range for the whole system. So when you turn down the volume you lose nothing. And in fact, we guarantee 110 dB signal to noise at 
One what? I see you gave, you're not using your line arrays any, anymore. Is, is yeah, this yeah. better for home theater? No, well, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we show uh, the 3D sound. Uh -huh. And uh, we knew that we didn't have enough time to really calibrate everything for the 3D experience. So we didn't want to give you the whole Monty this year. Next year, we're probably going to give you the whole Monty. Okay. So this is a more modestly priced system. But that's it. Uh, so digital transmission is is uh, happening to the end. We can run three, four, five hundred feet of CAT6 cable. From the processor, we have uh, 20 output channels, but out in the field, we can multiply that up to 256 channels. Every channel has a DSP to control the speed base you've got to. So there's a DSP controlling the performance of this mid to high speaker, there's another DSP controlling performance for each of the orders. Then in the setup of a system, we combine this speaker with the woofer and time align them so that the pressure wave comes to you at exactly the same time from the mid highs and from the lows. And then in the room, we compensate for the room acoustics with room perfect. So now this becomes one speaker, sonically. That becomes another speaker, sonically, which is frequency linear, phase linear, time correct, and has all the power to do virtually anything. So we don't have a subwoofer output from the processor. What we do is that the LFE channel goes in mono in the left and right speaker, and all the low frequency information from the other speakers are channeled to the left and right front speakers. But it is channeled in such a way that if we take, for instance, that speaker, everything from 200 Hz and down is not reproduced by that speaker. It's reproduced by that speaker. That complete system. And because it's a complete system, it can handle the time response and everything perfectly. If it had been a filtered subwoofer, it could not handle the time response, it would have a delay to it. So the low frequency that should have come from there is sent from this system a little bit ahead of time so that it arrives at your listening position exactly at the same time. So all of a sudden you'll think that it's a big speaker when you listen to it, but it's not. It's psychoacoustic bass steering, as we call it. Same with the rear speakers. We even mat matrix it so that the, that speaker in the back gets some output from that system and that system, again to coincide with the listening position. Would you ever consider doing two channels of sub, the same thing in the back? No. Only if the room is more than 50 feet approximately long. Well, we because of the wave. To add more woofers in the back. The base steering technology works so well that we don't even want to have a woofer there or a woofer there because it will mess up the time response. It takes a little bit of time to explain, but we don't want it. And we don't want them in the back unless the room is very long. And even if the customer wants to pay us to put in additional woofers, they would say no, because it's going to screw up the time it works. The first demo, they're all short trailers. Sorry, we don't have a lot of demo material. But it shows one good effect, and that is there's a leaf running, uh, yeah. whistling around. And there's some low frequency information on that. And it'll sound like that low frequency is coming from any direction. Okay, due good. Due to our base theory room. <coughs> Okay.